blessings to everybody. We give God all the glory. Jesus is Lord. As you're joining in, you can share this broadcast and say, Lord, I received the prophet's reward. Blessings to everyone. Um, so the kingdom system is so full of power to back you on earth, to keep you well taken care of, blessed, prosperous, and it's really a gracious realm of the father that he gives to you so that you'll be sustained. Not only that you'll be sustained, but you'll reign and have plenty, have abundance. The glorious thing about Proverbs chapter three, verse nine, is that it tells you the equation for plenty. That this is the plan of God for you to have more than enough of what you enjoy. But it tells you how to unlock it how to walk in it. You see how the word of God in Proverbs 3, 9 talks about that if you were set out to keep the Lord as the number one decision that you first make with money, that this is what he'll do for you. That in return, he'll cause you to have plenty. Now, this is him responding to you sowing so so he lets you know if you pass this test of keeping me as the first priority with your finances this is how i'm going to respond to you with plenty so plenty is a reward plenty is a harvest plenty is a divine response because of your prioritizing of the father, firstly. And plenty has an assignment. When God gives you plenty, there's more to the agenda. There's more to the task. There's more to the vision. So he put more provision because there's more to the vision. So there's more things that you're going to be doing. What was spectacular about Solomon is his discernment of the seed. Solomon had a discernment of the seed. Because if you look at the father's quick reaction to Solomon, it shows you that Solomon actually could have did many things with that money, with that seed. He could have took that financial currency because saints, even that burnt offering, what they could do is they could trade animals and they could make money off of it. They could, they could use it for financial gain. So they could take it and use it financially. But he saw fit to invest it into the presence of God. When Solomon invests this into the presence of God, what you want to see is this is that the Lord was impressed because he didn't want to take finances and use for himself. He wanted to bless the Lord with it. So hereby you can understand why the father has such a quick response to Solomon and why the Lord opens up the windows of heaven, the doors of heaven, the gates of heaven, because what God is saying I am impressed that you could have did anything with this money, but you kept me first. You could have bought whatever you wanted, but you kept me first. Saints, I talked to you about how we did a conference, 200,000 we put over $200,000 into the conference. I could have bought a Lamborghini. I could have bought a house. I could have bought a, a luxury vehicle. I could have bought a Maserati. 
But the mind of a sower, those things are not interesting when it comes to the presence of God. See, when the father is giving someone a hundredfold lifestyle, that is an individual that only sees the word of God as the highest treasure. There's nothing. Remember how in Proverbs 8 talked about in Proverbs chapter 3 and 4, uh, chapter 3 and chapter 4 talked about how wisdom, nothing can be compared to wisdom. See, when you are sower, you realize that nothing can be compared to wisdom. That wisdom is worth the investment. That wisdom is worth the time, the honor, the true worship, the submission, the obedience. You start realizing that wisdom, it can't be compared to nothing that you could ask for a house, a car, any of those things. Wisdom is higher than everything. See, Solomon thought that wisdom was higher than everything. So saints, there's a mystery to Solomon. When he thought that wisdom was higher to everything, God gave him everything. When he thought that it's better for me to invest this financial gain, this wealth, this financial exchange, this seed, I'll invest it into the wisdom of God. Then the father said, I'll give you everything else. Because you realize what I realize. My priority is for wisdom to be your pursuit. And that's what you wanted. The wisdom of sowing and reaping. When you're walking in the wisdom of God, he gives you grace to work. He gives you grace to solve problems. He gives you grace to unlock money. He gives you grace to sow. As you move with that grace to sow, he, he, he then introduces you into the grace to reap. After the grace to sow, then there's the grace to wait. Then is the grace to reap. Is the grace to sow, the grace to wait, the grace to reap. If you take it, let's write that down. The grace to sow, the grace to wait, the grace to reap. The hundredfold is where the blessing comes and multiplies all of your sowing. That's, that's why sowing is so important because the hundredfold is really God multiplying your sowing. Now, saints, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. So back to what I was saying also, you see how Solomon impressed God because God is saying you could take this financial gain and do whatever you want, but you saw fit to sacrifice unto me. See, your altar, the place where you're sowing, it is a place of sacrifice. And see, the Father loves sacrifice. See, we often heard uh, a sacrifice in a bad presentation because of Saul. Remember, obedience is better than sacrifice. But look at what, what, what's going on here. Saul didn't kill the Amalekites, but he wants to sow a seed and say, okay, all right, I'm good. But God saying, no, I told you to kill all the Amalekites. This is the instruction I gave you. You're using something to cover up your rebellion. So sacrifice brings pleasure to God. See, the law of sowing is where you sacrifice unto God. That's why the law of sowing is so progressive and so prosperous. Because 
this is where you have created our altar of sacrifice. Now, what if we think about sacrifice, what does it really mean? That I have other options to do with this, but I choose you, Lord. That's what sacrifice is. A sacrifice means that there's other things that I could engage, but I'm choosing to engage wisdom. Now, when somebody does that, this is where the father starts dealing with you different from others. He doesn't deal with you the same way as other people. Now you're in the bracket in the qualification for harvest because you have respected that, that law of the seed. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Let's look at verse. Let's look at verse 10. It says, now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food. So the seed and bread are two different provisions. And there's two different ministries. The seed is God saying, I'm going to put this in your hand and this really for me, but I'm going to see what you're going to do with it. The bread for food is God saying, this is going to be my response. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's read this again. Now he that minister of seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So he's ministering the seed to you. So this is God's ministry. God has a ministerial anointing to test you with finances, to test you with provision, to test you with seed. This is his ministry. He has a ministerial um, uh, position where he ministers seed to you. And then it says that he both minister bread for food. So I want you to see this. I just heard the father say, I don't just give you the seed. I give you the meat. Inside of that seed. And you won't discover the meat until you sow the seed. This is the same thing I was telling Adam. I told him that this seed shall be for his meat. But see, the meat was already in the seed. He was never going to see the meat until he sowed the seed. So saints, Adam already had his whole life in his hands. Because when God supplied him with seed, inside of that seed was his wife. Inside of that seed was his children. Inside of that seed was his wealth, his riches, his health, his, his justice, his protection. So if he eats the seed, he's eating his future. My God. Saints, I, I, I want to say this to you. Solomon was picked to be king, right? If he doesn't sow this thousand burnt offerings, he's not going to be that type of king. The significance, the signature, the uniqueness, the abundance, the riches, the wealth, the pleasure, the satisfaction, all of this occurred because of his decision to sow. So if he doesn't sow, he's going to be king, but he's not going to be this type of royal, distinguished king that we see in the word. 
Wow. Which shows you that your life could actually be with God and not be at the quality with God that it was supposed to be until you sow. You can say, Jesus, come into my heart, I repent of sin. But, but see, you're going to learn the kingdom. The kingdom is opposite from sin. Sowing is opposite from sin. Sowing is apart from sin. Sowing is another place other than sin. So when you come out of sin, you got to learn the lifestyle that's greater than sin. The lifestyle of sowing. See, the lifestyle of sowing is a greater life than sin. It's a greater power than sin. It's a greater system than sin. In the life of sowing, it will shut down all flesh, all addiction, all demons, all darkness. Because remember, even in Galatians, it dealt with sowing to the spirit. So that rule of sowing shuts down the flesh. The rule of sowing even cancels out the sinful nature, which now we understand why in Genesis 4, why Abel is sowing intentionally, aggressively. Now we know why Abel is such an intense sower. Because Abel is canceling out the error of his father. That the sin of Adam. The continuation of witchcraft. He's using the seed to cut the cord with curses. He's using the seed to speak to God in the tone of honor. In the river of humility. In the water of the fear of the Lord. And saints, no wonder God does not deal with Abel. As if he's dealing with Adam. Because he no longer sees Adam in Abel. Now he could see Adam in Cain. But look at what Cain is refusing to do. So. Imagine God is having the same stress that he had with Cain because Cain won't sow. It's dangerous when, when, you, when, 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 when you don't sow in this life. It's dangerous. The non-sower is stressful to God. Because he can't get what he loves out of you. The non-sower is stressful to God. Because God can't get out of you what he already declared is his pleasure. The father was getting pleasure out of Abel. Because Abel had a discernment for the seed. See, saints, you know what our generation do? We always discerning enemies. We discern, oh, this person don't like me. We discern. But saints, when we move from all of that other stuff, Adam had a discernment for the seed. Peter had a discernment for the seed. Solomon had sowing seed discernment. Seed sowing discernment. So their discernment was to observe, to sense out, to see that there was something given to them by the father that he wanted them to give back to him. He didn't give it to them for them to handle what they wanted to handle. He gave it to them for him. There was a portion of what they received back in their hands to give back to God.
Now let's go back here. Second Corinthians chapter nine. What profit? Is it okay if I put gas in my car? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying questions, stupid questions that people be asking. The prophet, is it okay if I pay my light bill? See, sowing, you gotta, it's like health. I, I won't be real raw here. It's like health. Like sometimes people try to use the word for health, but their faith not really there because you didn't feed yourself enough of the word to even operate in supernatural health. You see what I'm saying? Like some people, they try to use the word for health, but they haven't even meditated. It hasn't become a reality for them. Well, that's the same way with the seed. If you don't understand sowing, you don't understand what you're doing. Oh, I'm, I'm just going to do it because that's what God said. Like, it's not a reality to you. You're not in faith. See, God made faith the avenue in which all things get to you. So if you're doing something as a ritual, I'm just sowing because this is a ritual. You know, I know I'm supposed to do this. That's not, that's not, that's not the work of faith. That's the work of ritual. And revelation is higher than ritual. Because revelation, this, this, this is a part of you. It's like your oxygen. You can't live without it because you know what it does. You know what it's forming. You know what it's creating. You know that the seed that you plant is a magnet for all that God has spoken. You know that the seed is bringing satisfaction to the father. He feels good. And when he's in a good mood, he does spontaneous miracles. Could we say that the father is in a good mood when he tells Solomon, what shall I give you? Yes. He's in a good mood. Is Isaac in a good mood? Does he pick God in a good mood with his sowing? Yes. Let's go even further. Genesis chapter 8, verse 21 and verse 22. You notice what God says. Verse 20, 21, 22. God says be, he smelt the seed. See, the seed has a smell. See, that show you that seed sowing goes to God's sense realm. Seed sowing goes to God's sense realm. Remember, smelling is one of your senses. So, so when you sow in, it goes to God's sensory system. God is sensitive about the activity of the sower. So saints, with, with that being known that your sowing, it goes to God's sense realm, that's, that's, you can also look at God, how he deal with you after you sow. He's real sensitive with who you hang around. He's real sensitive with how you spend your time. He's real sensitive by what you let entertain you. He's real sensitive by who you give access to you. Now you understand why he gets sensitive about those things. Because you done entered into his sense realm when you started sowing. There's an intensity God will let another woman go do what she want, but God will say, you, you can't do that. God will let a man go do what he want and not even warn him five times. But God will tell you, you go do that. I tell you, I better take my life from you. Because you're in God's sense realm. See, sowers, they in a greater covenant with God than the whole body of Christ. Because they actually making the body of Christ be manifested and demonstrated on earth. It, they are supporting the working of the body of Christ. So God talked to you higher than every other person. That's why you're not going to know certain things until you start sowing. And you're not going to have a backbone to make a stand for what God told you he want until you start sowing. Because that seed does something with your heart. 
where you walk in a raw anointing to stick with the father and his pattern and his path and his promise. The seed does surgery on your soul, delivering it from rebellion, witchcraft, sin, idolatry, setting it free from the things that's unnecessary and magnifying all of God's pleasures to you. See, the seed is God's pleasure. So when you start sowing the seed, everything that is God's pleasure start being made known to you. So if God has pleasure in sanctification, he's going to magnify sanctification. If he has pleasure in you saying thank you, he's going to magnify, say thank you. If he has pleasure in you deleting people out your life and disconnecting from people, you're going to find yourself that urge to disconnect from people, delete people from your life. If, if, if he has pleasure in you praying in tongues, you're going to find that urge to pray in tongues. He had pleasure in you not eating so recklessly, being gluttonous or, or being in gluttony, you're going to find yourself operating in, 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 in that same place. What's going on there? The spirit is guiding you to all of God's menus of pleasure because that's what you engaged. The minute you went, go sow that seed, you told God, I'm interested in your pleasure. And since there's a purity in sowing, when you realize that I'm doing this because this is what God is looking for from me. This is what he enjoys. And when you get that revelation and it's full inside of you and you start sowing. Now, guess what God does? You reap what you sow. So that same mentality that you operated in to sow, now God operates in that same bracket, sowing to you what brings you pleasure, what you enjoy. Now, saints, you may say, well, prophet, why, why don't God give me all of my pleasures now? Number one, because they'll destroy you. Remember, God loves the cheerful giver. Love doesn't destroy. God loves the cheerful giver. Love does not destroy. Remember the Bible said love's, love does no harm. Love does no harm. So God not going to harm you and give you all type of pleasures just because you want it and you really not even are capable mentally to sustain that type of pleasure. Sometimes people say, I want to have a mansion. Well, God can already see the future. You don't have enough teaching in you, enough discipline in you, enough maturity in you yet. So when you get that mansion, everybody having their, their wedding invitation over there. Everybody having their baby shower over there. You telling people, you inviting people to tell them, you can use my house. People hanging out, chilling watching Netflix and doing what they want to do in their house. And remember the presence of God is studying that house very cautiously. So you, so God give you that mansion, you're going to die in that mansion. Cause he going to judge you and the wages for sin is what death. So you understand why, um, the father doesn't drop every pleasure on you immediately because you don't be having enough maturity on the inside of you to sustain that pleasure. That pleasure will, will draw you away from that chaste obedience and that, 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 that focus, that supernatural dedication that you walk in. See, saints, I realized something even about my life, right? Uh, when I was 17, I had a lot of knowledge, right? But I noticed that the father wouldn't give me certain, um, I, I wasn't possessing certain things yet. I was sowing because even at the age of 17, even if you anointed, your mind still is lacking some blind spots on purpose. It's for the development. Like 
let me just be real raw with you. I don't understand how them little 13 years old and 14 year old girls be getting pregnant because the tune tune not even developed yet. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't even know how the boys be doing this because the, the, the parts not developed yet. So there's a major malfunction there. You see what I'm saying? Um, so, so for seed or, or for even a harvest of a child to come is, 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 is still weird because the body parts not developed. So there's a malfunction there. Um, well, how much more? When we deal with sowing and reaping, sometimes there's still a malfunction you underdevelop, even though you sowing, you sowing, that's commendable. You got a revelation, but you, you still got some blind spots, some naive spots. You don't understand that when God give you that Lamborghini, you can't give everybody a ride. And you can't drive that Lamborghini to the club. You can't be in that Lamborghini on your way to the strip club. See, now, now you're invoking the wrath of God on you. So, so you got to be mature. The light of God has to fill your body. Remember in Matthew chapter six, it talks about that if your eye is single, then your whole body will be full of light. Now, when your body is full of light, then your body goes in the direction that God wants it to go. And it does the activities that God wants it to do because the light of God is filling the body. So when the light fills the body, the body actually doesn't yield to satanic appetites. Remember, how, how do you manifest sin? You manifest sin with the body. Your body got to do something. Like you could think about arguing with somebody, but if God don't want you to argue with them, if, you, you, if you're going to manifest the sin of argument, you got to use your mouth. You know it's that, which is your body. Or if somebody don't want you to fight somebody, you go to punch them. Well, you're using the body to manifest the imagination, the vain imagination, the thought. So think about this. When your whole body is full of light, now your body will only yield to the spirit of God. It will not do anything that is of demons, of evil, of uncleanness. It will not listen to anything that is dark. It will only perform the deeds of the father. The Holy Ghost, he can make you rich right now in one moment. One thing that I want to tell you is this. As somebody that walked through the process of him bringing you and raising you into the abundant life and prosperity and being prosperous. Remember, Joshua 1.8 says that you make your way prosperous. But how, how do you make your way prosperous? You make your way prosperous because of you, your inward man. Remember, it talked about meditating in his law day and night. Well, look, it's showing you how to make your way prosperous. Your inside man has to be fully mature, cleansed, delivered. It can't be following um, error and deception and wrong decision making and mistakes. The inward man got to be fully Functioning like God. Remember Ephesians 5, 1, be ye imitators of God. Be an imitator of God. Well, that's the inward man. You imitate God through the inward man. The outward man start doing what the inward man is doing. So, when you in that process where God is, is, is um, he's, he's, he's bringing you into that physical manifestation of your wealthy place, you have to realize this. There are some things that you need to learn and apply yourself to learning. Like sometimes you don't detect everything. Like um, even a child thinks that they're ready to do everything. But you as their parent, no, no, you're not. You're not ready to do that. Not saying that they can't do it, but they're not ready 
meaning that inward man does not have the sustaining information for them to do it. The maturity, the mindset, the understanding, the comprehension, there's not enough light inside of them to be qualified to handle that. Well, that's the same way with God. Like I told you, God give you wealth. You can't be up there talking about, I'm going to pay for everybody's bills. I'm going to pay for everybody's car note. I'm going to pay for everybody's house note. I'm going to pay for everybody's taxes. I'm going to pay for everybody's uh, medical bills. No, you can't do that with the wealth. You see what I'm saying? Because the Holy Ghost giving you that wealth, there's certain things that he want to accomplish with that wealth. And if you mishandle the wealth, the wealth going to go. And when the wealth go, guess what? The plan of God is delayed. Yes, he can, he can do that, raise up somebody else, but he wanted to use you. Now you done failed him with the finances. Do you know that you can fail God with finances? That's why I move cautiously with money. I'm in my 20s and I ain't doing no crazy stuff. If anybody would have got that type of money that, I, that I've seen, they would do all type of crazy stuff. I know it. You listen to young people. You listen to how they listen to their dreams and their goals and what they want to accomplish. They, they do a lot of dumb stuff with wealth and won't even acknowledge God with it. Won't ask God, what can I do for you? What seed could I sow into your work? How could I push your man of God? How could I push a teacher that you have sent to teach me the word? See, that mindset is only in the pure in heart. That's the reason why they could see God and not see that money. See, the minute that you start seeing money, money start becoming God to you. You'll worship it. But when you see God, you could direct that money and train that money. See, you are money's trainer. You train money to submit to God like you're submitting to God. And see, you train money to copy you. You're sowing your life. You train money to be sown. Are you seeing this? You train money to copy you. You have surrendered to God with your life. You train money to surrender. You're honoring God with your life. You train money to honor God. You are investing yourself into the gospel. You train money to invest itself into the gospel. Saints, the hundredfold lifestyle is houses and lands. It's divine family. Now, saints, why would God promise you divine family if your original family, your natural family was right? You ever thought about that? Why would God have to give you a harvest of something that you already have? So every sower must understand those words that I just spoke. He promised to give you a family of God in the hundredfold, which speaks volumes. Then he talks about houses and lands. He said that you're going to have it with persecution. Now, saints, what I want you to see is this. The hundredfold, when you look at your great-grandma, your grandma, your, your mama, you, why y'all ain't got the hundredfold? There's some foolishness going on in the genes. You got to break the curse and sow your way out. You got to honor God with your finances. You got to honor God with your time, with your moments on earth. You got to respect him with the body that he has given to you and understand that that body is only to be used for the spirit of the Lord. Your time is only to be used for the spirit of the Lord. Your mind is only to be used for the word of God. You got to break the curse. Why the hundredfold not being transferred from generation to generation? The, the godliness is not there. Godliness is not there. If godliness was there, you would have had it. It's a blessing when you get things right in your generation. Everybody watching me right now, you're in your generation. 
you have a chance to get it right. The other generation didn't get it right. That's why they didn't pass down the hundredfold to you. You will activate and live in the hundredfold. I decree and I declare over you, you will live in the hundredfold. You will live in the hundredfold. Well, prophet, how do I live in the hundredfold? You got to discern what God places in your hand that he wants you to put back in his hands. Sometimes God sold time to you. You up there, take the time. You scrolling all over Facebook. He gave you that time for you to give that time back to him. He give you health. You take that health. You decide who you want to hang with, where you want to travel, where you want to uh, exert your bodily strength. No, he gave you that health. Now give that health back to him. The hundredfold in real is, is in realizing that everything around you is a seed that you sow it. That God has given it to you for you to give it back to him. He gives you money for you to become a sower. He gives you money for you to engage his power. When you're sowing, you are in receptivity of the manifest glory and presence of King Jesus. When you're sowing, you are pushing a minister of the gospel to the next degree of his assignment. When you're sowing, you're receiving the prophet's reward. When you're sowing, there's an apostolic glory on you to walk in governmental wealth, governmental riches.